Hello again, everybody. Right, so if you watched the previous video in this series, you've just seen me connect everything to the mixer. Um, I'm going to run through how I've set things up in the RC so that everything works like that as it should. Because obviously we want guitar signals to go out of a, of a separate output to the cajon, to the shaker, etc. So you can probably see I've actually always got, if you just look at the screen, I've always got three input effects from, from input effect bank A on. And I'm going to talk about what they do in the next video, which hopefully will be the final video in this series. Because I'm just trying to go through as much as much um as possible. So I'm going to talk about the effects. I'm going to talk about how I would EQ uh, the vocal microphone and my cajon to get a decent signal. So stay tuned for that. But in this one, we're going to run through a bit of routing, um, ins and outs, etc. So it's important to note, everyone, as well, by the way, that I use, I set everything to memory because I don't want I don't want all of these things to affect across the whole system because there might be some memories that I want to do things slightly different. So it's a lot easier for me. If I do things per memory and then I just save this as a template, move it on to the next one and make little fine adjustments along the way. So we're going to go and um, let's have a look at the, the track settings for each track first. So if I press loop and then go into track one, everything's pretty much as it is normally. I've changed my stop mode to loop so that they finish at the end of the cycle. And uh, what else we talk about? I do predetermine the length of the measures. That's just because then I don't need to close the loop. I'll always have to close, record and close the first recorded loop, but all of the subsequent subsequent loops, depending on the so the song, I can predetermine the measure, makes things a lot easier, and I'm not doing as much of that tap dancing. Um, on this particular track, my sync mode is set to measure, but a lot of the time it is, it is at loop length, it depends on the song. Everything else is pretty much as is. Now, for the track one input, obviously I just want my guitar signal go into track one, which is instrument one. So that's why everything else, maybe the rhythm should be off as well, uh, but everything else is off. It's just instrument one that's going to track number one. So that's pretty much the track settings there. I'm just gonna press loop to go across to track two. If you remember, track two is also a guitar. So again, it's just instrument one that gets recorded to track two. Uh, track three is my shaker. So again, that's just my microphone. So everything else is off. Um, and a track four is my vocals where I can put my harmonies down. So again, microphone on, everything else off. Track five is my bass guitar. So that's instrument one in and everything else off. And then track six is my cajon, which we wired up to instrument two. So that's how all of the, um, the settings, that's how everything from instrument one and instrument two, where are we back here, gets recorded to its own designated loop. So guitars for one and two and five. Vocals is three for my shaker or percussion and four. And then Cajon Instrument 2 goes to track six. Right, in the record settings, I do have record play. Sometimes, depending on the memory, I might go straight to dub, but record play most of the time. I've set quantized to measure. I do occasionally have use this, in fact, I, I use it quite a lot really, have this auto record um, feature on. For this song, it's on 51. Um, I do actually, I should really adjust that because sometimes it is a little bit, um, it doesn't really kick in if I'm using a shaker, for example, it might not pick up that, that signal. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll change that. I need to change that on a few of the different ones. And then I just leave my bouncing off. Don't worry about that. Uh, play, we've got in case I'm in single mode, I might want my tracks to change at the end of the loop. Fade in and out time, depending on the song, you can set that there as well, but I just leave that. All start stop. Don't really use the all start stop feature for this song, so that's all just as it is. And yeah, that's it. That's all you really need to worry about there. So now we can go into the actual routing of um, of how everything is connected because we know the signal coming in for each of the instruments, and now that's going to each of the recorded tracks. What we want is to have that signal going to its own output and have the tracks going to the same output. So we do that in the routing. Oh, pressed it too many times. We're gonna to go to output and we go into the routing. So first of all, let's make sure our tracks are going to the right, uh, right output. So as you remember, it's just track three and track four that I want for my um, main vocals, which is the percussion on three and the, the harmonies on four. So everything else is there off. Sub one is my guitar, sub one L. So that's one, two and five, which is one and two of my guitars and five is my bass. Um, 
forget about that, don't even need to use it. And sub 2L is just my cajon, which goes from track 6. And then that's off. Uh, headphones. Everything can go to my headphone mix, just so that I can hear it all coming through. But again, it depends on the song. Sometimes I just want a metronome being sent to the headphones. It, that's all depends on the actual song itself. Let's go into the input rhythm. So again, this is where I can send a, a signal, so an instrument or a microphone to directly to the output. So you're aware by now, I've said it so many times, that it's just my main output. I just want my microphone being sent to. So everything else is off. Instrument one goes to sub one L. So everything else is off there. And I don't use sub one R, so that's off. And then sub two L is my instrument two, which is my cajon. And I don't use that one. And then everything is still rigged up to go to the phones. Depending on whether I'm recording or I'm sending my rhythm track to be recorded to the loop, that will all depend on whether I want to change the output to loop. And then there's a few other settings that I'll need to, to change as per the song there. So that is pretty much how all the routing works. I have made some EQ adjustments to my vocal microphone and my cajon. So I'll talk about those in the next video. And what else have we got to talk about in this one? I think that's pretty much it. Mixer, you see I've muted my mic too because I don't use it. Um, Everything is at a reasonable level. Sometimes I might have my my input signal a little bit lower than this. Um, and then I use my, let's just go across here. I use my master out just to control the master. Um, and I don't like cranking this too high. So I'd rather have my, um, my signal coming out of each of the outputs to be slightly higher than cranking the master. Or I might adjust my play levels to be slightly higher than cranking the master. But that is it, everybody, for how I've routed everything. Any questions, do please ask, and I'll try and get back to you on those. Or anything that you think I should do differently, leave some comments down below. I'm always learning, I'm just like all of us, really. So, um, But this seems to work for me at the moment. In the next video, I will talk about my FX from my guitar amp, my um, FX, input effects that I have on here, and some EQ adjustments that I've made along the way. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ta!